The Monerotopia Price Report segment is sponsored by Exolix, a privacy-focused, non-custodial, instant crypto exchange. Go to exolix.com to enjoy secure and completely anonymous swaps with no KYC or sign-up. Swap between Monero and 2,000-plus assets at the most competitive rates and with no limits. Exolix.com, your fast and secure way to privacy. All right. Yeah, we get, we got to give Exolix some love, even though we're All not right. having the price report. Oh, wait, you're bringing up yours. Okay. I had mine up. Go for it. Oh, let me turn it um, But yeah, I just want to say yeah. Exolix uh, will, will be down there as well. They were down there last year. They're uh, another uh, great sponsor of Monerotopia. Very reliable. Greatly appreciate their sponsorship. And um, I think they're I think I think they're they're doing great work in terms of being an instant exchange. I know Tux. I think you've you've had experiences with them as well, right? Low, low yeah, rates. Yeah, you like Netflix. Yeah, competitive rates, uh, reliable. They have so Xano. Guys, There's not many that have Xano. They have Xano. So guys, definitely definitely check them out if you're, if you're trying to get in on Xano. We should bring up Xano too. I haven't I haven't even uh, seen the yeah. Show us. Show us your TA skills. Doug. I have zero. I have zero. I have zero TA skills. I don't know how to read the tea leaves, but go ahead, Tux. Can, can you read the tea leaves for us? Not not like body can. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Monero's chilling at, well, about where it was a week ago. It's a little higher. Uh, it's at one. No, it looks like it's been this climbing, bro. It's a, it's a little higher. Um, oh, wait. This is, this is uh, hold on. This chart is way too. Let's get one hour chart here we go yep all right so about Just a week a ago it has gone up from 150 to 161 after that dip because of the crack in european delisting uh so it is it is gaining some ground once again oh uh, wow i can't i still can't believe it dipped to 135 at the beginning of october it wasn't as bad as the binance delisting for sure um it took a little hit but it came back up pretty quickly and it's back up to 160 which is that sweet spot that it's usually sitting at uh yeah, so uh maybe it can get closer to 170, 180 for Monerotopia. That'd be nice. That'd be nice. We'll see. I, I think my guess was 202 was my my 202. Bad. Yeah, I think mine was around 180, 185. Oh, uh, you might be sitting forward. pretty. You might I be might be, I might be close. I have no idea what which charts of these are actually. But if it hits 185, it might just rally from there, man. It might it might, it might, it might rally right from there. I mean, if it hits back. like I think maybe 190, I mean 200 for sure. If it can stay above there, that's that's going to be a new floor, a pri new price floor, I think, because it, it's been a price ceiling for quite a while now. It's 200, 190, 200 around there. So, yeah, that'd be cool, though. That'd be interesting to see. Uh, Bitcoin's back up. It's back up. It's trying again. It's trying again. It's at 68.3 right now. Okay. Uh, so it's trying again for that 70k, I guess. And then gold also. Uh, there's been a lot of negative news surrounding banks and their debt, so gold has been uh, also. Uh, I don't want to get gold. It's more gold USD. Gold yeah, USD it's, it's might like, be close I mean, enough. It's like people yeah. pe people know something, right? <laughs> there's people. So, some big institutions, I feel like, are, are are you know moving more into into gold right now. I guess no matter what happens after the election, it's going it's there's going to be some instability, whether or not Trump wins or Kamala wins. If Trump wins, there'll be riots who are potentially right. Who knows what the hell is going to happen? Um, if Kamala wins, people are just going to be terrified of unrealized capital gains tax. So, like, either way, uh, you know, gold and crypto is probably a, a good and gold's just hit another all time play. high by far. I mean, it February was around two two k, uh, and then slowly it just continued to go up, and now it's it's up to two two thousand seven hundred thirty five, uh, which is an all time high once again. So, people are putting money in gold right now. Uh, Monero UK just said, if you get plus or minus within $5, I'll pay one XMR. So what's the, what's the, what's the rule for that? So the day Monerotopia starts, my price estimate has to be plus or minus within $5. I, I guess that's what he's saying. Well, you already have your, are you going to, you can't change your estimate now. No, no, it's, I, I'd have to check with body to confirm what it was. I think it was 185 because <laughs> he has the chart. Um, 
I'm pretty sure I'm 202. That would that'd be wild if we if we got up that high by Monerotopia. I mean, that means you know Monero Monero's flying high, bouncing back from being delisted. It can only be delisted so many more times, and it, every time it seems to get delisted, the effect seems to be less, and the bounce back seems to be stronger. Um, so I I think things are sitting pretty 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 right now i mean uh obviously monero has lost a lot of ground it was doing it had the same momentum that bitcoin had you know it was climbing with bitcoin and then bam it got delisted yet again so lost some momentum there but it's seems to be rallying back uh, uh monero uk said uh it was guessing the price on christmas day what Guessing the Monero price on Christmas Day, if you're plus okay. or minus, and then $5, I'll pay one XMR. Wow. Very, very generous of him. So this what's your generous. guess? Christmas Day. Oh, boy. Let's see what it was. Let's look at the year. The Let's look at the 12 month here. Yeah. Um, December. Christmas Day it was, it was around one. It was like one, just about 180, 178. Okay. This year, hmm, it, it really just depends what happens. Do we have a major economic event that kind of pulls everything back even more? Or I mean, yeah, we got the we got the presidential election. It's going to be a, a bit of a different world after that. Trump is let's tr good chance Trump will be the guy in office. Um, what does that then mean for the broader market? Crypto, Monero, obviously. I'll have to think about this one. Yeah, I don't know. Hard to say. Um, I think I think crypto will will continue to rally. Trump will get in. Crypto will will rally. It would definitely be good for crypto if Trump got in. That's for sure. Yeah, I mean Monero. You know, Monero, Monero always seems to be its own thing, right? Like, and I don't know. No, no politician seems to be good for Monero. Uh, I don't think Trump has proven that he would be. You know, actually, you know good for Monero. He'll be good for crypto. He'll be good for his own crypto that he launched. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, DJT. What's it? Uh, uh, like an ETH token or something. Dude, what is... Uh, it's like, it was, come it on, man. It's like, like, I, it's like I want to vote for you. I'm voting. I'm voting for Trump no matter what, but you're not making it easy, man. You're not making it easy. You got to like, you got to grift us and scam us as you do it. Like, just... Just freaking focus on the election, get in the office, and do some of the pro liberty things that you claim you'll be doing. Free Ross, okay? Free Ross. We don't need you. We don't need you grifting your your crypto. Like, I, how, how does he get to that point? That's just, that to me. That's just like it just show it just shows major flaws, right? I mean, what do you what's what's your reaction to that, Tux? It, it, yeah. shows his, it shows his true colors, which we've always known. But then people, some pe I never forget it, but some people forget, right? Like they, they get mesmerized and they get excited by, oh, man, he's a second coming, right? The guy's our savior. He really is for the people. But you forget, he's at the end of the day, he's he's Trump. He's Trump Enterprises. He's, he's a grifter by nature, man. <laughs> his grift happens to align with liberty right now, which is good. So go ahead. Grift away, uh, do pro liberty things. Interest the line there, but let's not forget. Let's not forget who he is. If you're in the U.S., go vote for Trump. Let's get him in office 100. percent But God damn it, man! What what is what is he doing with trying to pump uh, you know a, a scam project a month out from from his presidential election? And it's like, oh yeah, it's, I, I took a look at it myself, and it's it's even funnier. In order to it's like the most anti uh, crypto thing. It's like in order to even get some of this token, you have to KYC yourself. You have to use Wallet Connect because it's the theory of yeah. thing. Then you have to give yeah. them a picture of your driver's license to make sure you're yeah. a US citizen, all this stuff to get your DJT token. <laughs> you have to be a qualified investor, right? Because they, they don't want to, you know, go to jail for SEC, viol you know, securities violations. So you have to either be, you know, a qualified investor or a foreigner. So it's like not even open up to the general U.S. public, which I guess is a good thing. So oh, less... really? Oh, I wasn't aware of that. 
yeah, you either have to be a, you know, a, a qualified, well, I forget the proper term, a qualified, like investor, you know, have to show that you have so much money in, in your savings account, right? Like to, to invest in, in things like, like this, right? So it's Otherwise, just a gate kept thing. Yeah. So if they completely opened it up, it would be securities fraud, right? Um, yeah. Yep. So, or, or you could be a foreign investor outside of the U.S. where the, you know, the SEC doesn't. And somehow doesn't, that's a better apply. thing. <laughs> yeah so it's like so even uh, you know it, and it's funny because it's like him announcing it with the american flags in the background like the typical american can't even legally invest in his in his ipo here his ico it's hilarious dude he's got his sons i guess are the ones that roped him into this i see they're all over the project i don't know if you want to bring it up maybe we could, we could talk about that later i think it will come up in the news i don't know um yeah, price report. I think I think we're looking pretty here. One sixty. I'm sticking with my my. I, well, I have to stick with it anyway. But I'm actually. I think I think we could get to two hundred two, guys. The magic could happen. We got a month out. Three uh, three weeks. Three weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Who knows? Who knows? One eighty is probably more realistic, but you never know. You never know. It would have been a lot more realistic if that Kraken event didn't happen. Um, oh yeah. It had to take a little bit of time to recover. But we'll see. We'll see. But I do feel like at some point, once, you know, it's being delisted so much and every time it keeps to creeping back up, at some point it's going to like creep back up, but then just kind of keep on going and there'll, there'll be there'll be nothing left to push it back down. You know, it's I like mean, the, that's they're, the they're, hope. They're, yeah. It just depends on how much demand there ends up being compared to uh, the amount of liquidity available. Because uh, if like there's high demand, um, and there's like such a low liquidity, like there's not enough liquid Monero, then it will still, that could still potentially cause price to uh, not take off like you want it to. There has to be like a kind of a, an even play between them. Like obviously scarcity can bring Monero's price to be super valuable, but there has to also be liquidity there so people can trade to make the price go up. There right, has they to need be to be able to access. Exactly. Yeah, right, they need to... Right. It might be super scarce and everybody wants it. But then if it's like there's no bridges to get it, but the bridges exist, right? We got Exelix. Yeah. We got all these yeah. instant exchanges. We got uh, Sarai coming down the pipe any day now. We have we have uh, Havino, which is growing in usage. We have XMR Bazaar. Obviously, that's not the most liquid way to get to get Monero. But there are collectively there's a lot of different on and off ramps into Monero that exists right now. And, and it's only growing. And they're only becoming the more decentralized. Tip. Thank you, thank you, thank you for the tip. How about uh, bring up bring up Zano? I am curious about Zano as well. I was trying to use trading views, but since I don't have an account, they blocked me. <laughs> so, all right, here's Zano. I think this is the Kraken price. It's on Live Point Watch. Um, what is it at? Oh wow, it's six. currently at six dollars twenty six cents. Zano's been doing really, really, really good. Um, really good. It's been holding its own really well. Uh, like it keeps getting up to the six dollar mark. Yeah, it'll go down quite a bit. Um, you know, still pretty low liquidity coin. So these price swings are normal, but it keeps coming back up, right? It keeps holding its own. Um, and it never it never crashed to where it was a couple months ago after it came up to that six dollars. Um, it's only gone down to like uh, it's below a little below five dollars. Uh, but Zana's doing really well. Um, and hopefully that momentum continues. And hopefully it is because of, and I think it will be, it's because it's like it's an upcoming project that actually has some cool properties to it. It's providing some really cool features. Uh, and I think that's why there's a lot of hype behind it, not just because of speculation, although I'm sure there's a lot of speculation with it right now because it's a new project. Um, yeah, so super excited for Zano and Cakewall, especially. Mm -hmm. Zano project all time high inbound. Yeah, maybe we'll see an all time high at Monerotopia for. Now, what uh, is the actual all time high? Let's see. Yeah, what is the actual all time high? Oh wow, it was like. Oh a, wow. So this, uh, yeah, okay, twenty twenty one bull run. It hit eight dollars in like a day and then crashed. Uh, that uh, was a pure speculation event right there. <laughs> it went from one and a half to eight. Hilarious. Somebody made some mad gains there. So eight dollars. That is its current ATH. Is what it looks like. Uh, yeah, eight dollars per step. Xano Project is asking Monero Topia price prediction. All right, so we're saying uh, Monero 202, which is kind of a long shot at this point. But for Xano, 
Hmm. Was it is that six dollars right now? That's six dollars uh, twenty six right now. Yeah, it's. Sitting pretty I'm gonna deep. say we break the all time high. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for it. Right? Why not? Honestly, it's optimistic. Uh, yeah. Break the the eight. I mean, it's possible. I mean, considering what it's too, done. Too, in too bad I months. sold all my Zano from from Latin. <laughs> um. No, I'm gonna say. Uh, yeah, I, I say it's gonna break the all time high and uh, hit. I don't know. Hit eight dollars and what was the all time high? Eight dollars. Eight dollars three cents. Oh, hey, look, we got. Mr. T A himself. I'm saying we're gonna hey, hit, hit like we're gonna hit like nine bucks. I'm gonna say uh nine. Wow, ballsy, nine, ballsy. Okay. Nine okay. nine nine oh two. Nine oh two. We're gonna <laughs> nine dollars and two cents. Hey, what's up, guys? Can you hear me? Good morning, buddy. What's up, buddy? Hey, buddy, we don't need you anymore, man. We just did the <laughs> we just did the price report. <laughs> Fucking A, man. Not we did quite the, uh, the uh, non-TA Tux version. <laughs> you got to make your own investments, you know. <laughs> um. Yeah. No. You're. You, you want to take it? You want to maybe do a, like a uh, an abbreviated version, just because we've been talking about it already for twenty minutes. Yeah, abbreviated is probably probably a good here. <laughs> I'm basically not set up at all. I was screwing around with um, I was screwing around with um my video drivers <laughs> and. Uh, um, I forgot that I had like installed some new software. I was trying to get CUDA going and anyways, um, I rebooted this morning and I was like, oh crap, because <laughs> then my, my X server wouldn't start. So I was like trying to roll back and I forgot, I, I forgot to take a snapshot, et cetera, you know, excuses, excuses. So I just booted to a different, uh, distro. I booted, I booted into cubes just now. So <laughs> we'll see if I can actually do this on cubes. It's very difficult yeah. to do like pass through and microphones and all that shit with cubes, but Sure. You know, we'll, we'll give it a try. Um, let me see if I'm sharing my screen. Xano Project saying, bold prediction, Doug. We'll get you some gift if you really meet your prediction. All right. Let's make it happen, guys. <laughs> oh, man. I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to be pumping, pumping Xano or anything, really. Right. Uh, I, I try to avoid that, as everybody knows. Uh, but I do think, you know, I've, I've spoken about it many times on the show. Um, Monero, all the way. It's it's winning in the for digital cash purposes. Uh, that's that's what I'm most interested in in terms of crypto in general. But Xano has proven to me that they are a legitimate project and they're doing some very interesting things. And they are are old school Monero people that that are working on this front. You don't get more old school than uh, Crypto Zoidberg, who basically developed the first implementation of CryptoNote. He came to Monerotopia, the last one we had, very open to talking about things in a very kind of an, an intelligent way, not a scammy way. Um, and so I think they, they've proven themselves. And like Tux was saying, some very interesting tech that isn't necessarily uh, competing with Monero to be digital cash, but to be, to be something else, right? To kind of um, ha have programmable elements that Monero lacks and probably will lack for the foreseeable future and there's definitely a lot of a value that can come out of a, a a crypto that will have the strength and privacy of something like monero but with added programmability so interested from that point of view yeah i mean it's hard to argue with one of the early one of the earliest guys in monero one of the earliest devs in monero um you know trying to branch out and, and make something more interesting. It's like, you know, why are we here if not for the tech? And who's going to mm -hmm. develop the tech if, if not the smart guys? So, Gotta Right, and, and what, was, what was kind of most revealing with Cryptozoidberg from when I first interviewed him is that, you know, he he had a little bit of a bad rap. There was like, you know, he was he was thrown under the bus, right? Because he was he was part of the early days of CryptoNote and you had you know, the, the, essentially the, the fork that happened and they, they forked it away and they created Monero. And, um, but when you, when you actually spoke to him and got to learn about him, you, you see that he's just a very legitimate guy that's interested in the tech that's building interesting tech. He's not, he's not a scammer. He's a builder. Um, and he was, was there from the beginning. So, yeah. Respect. Yeah. In a lot of cases, you just, you won't know if something will work or if it's viable or practical, um, unless you just go and do it, right? Like so sometimes you can't quite see the light at the end of the tunnel on a development path, but it's like, well, we have enough to at least get started. And so it's, it's like, well, you should at least, you should at least start because maybe, 
maybe that development path will clear for you or someone, some kind of breakthrough will be made, some kind of uh, key research will be made on, on that path. Mm -hmm. Somebody saying, who is Pavel? Pavel is one of the, uh, is one of the Xano devs. He'll be there as well. Um, I, they're going to have a gr good group of people. I think there's going to be like six, six Xano team members down there. So at Monerotopia. But go ahead, body. Take it away. Uh, if you can try to try to keep it somewhat short, because we have up, oh, we have Pavel, the other Pavel, um, that Pavel Luptek that's uh, getting ready to jump on. He's he's waiting patiently. So cool. Yeah, we'll, I'll, I'll uh, do uh, based on this uh, this Tux line here. This is called the Tux line. Uh, we will be at <laughs> four hundred uh, by June of next year. This is uh, the trend based on the past uh, two months. Line go up. There you go, guys. That's the most yeah. valid TA I've seen anyone make, at least in like the past two years. 100%. <laughs> um, all right. So, yeah, I'll try and jump into it. What is it? 10 o'clock right now? Or I guess that'd be 12 o'clock your time. Yeah. So I'll try and be in and out in like 10 or 15 minutes here. Um, okay. So the simple fact is that, uh, you know, we had the, we had the crack in listing in Europe, you know, a little bit of downside, and then we kind of been to the upside. I'm not really seeing a great way to draw this line right here. So maybe we just won't try to hazard drawing the line. Um, this is the four hour chart. So effectively, you know, you'll notice that where did we, where did we come back to, right? We found some resistance at the very long term moving average cluster, which would be the, uh, the white lines there. Um, and then we're kind of, uh, looks like we're on our way probably, probably to this upper standard deviation area. Um, you know, a lot of that's going to be contingent on where the rest of the market goes, uh, but not necessarily, right. And it's not that much farther up for Monero to get to that, those standard deviation areas. Let's go ahead and take a look at the daily so you can get a little bit better, broader view here of what's going on. Um, oh, wow. I have some extra, <laughs> this is a indicator that a buddy of mine created and well, it's not exactly proprietary, but I can't show you guys. I'm sorry. Um, it's interesting. He looks at volume and he looks at like where the most amount of pain would be for people to get liquidated on either side of a price movement. Um, and he does that based on volume and some other interesting stuff. So uh, um, I don't look at it too much, but it, it can definitely be one of those extra things that I'll look at for um, like if I'm trying to get some clarity on something that doesn't look quite clear. Anyways, um, yeah, so I mean, just stable coin levels as usual, you know, kind of boring, not much to talk about here. It is nice for us to have made a, a bump up to the tune of 20%. In my mind, that's free money, right? Like that's that's totally free money. When we come down to these levels, because some new delisting happens, it's like, thank you very much buying more Monero. Like, <laughs> um, you know, especially since I'm always spending it, it's like, okay, now I top up my bags down here and I just got 20% free, right? So that's 20% that I can just keep spending that it's like, hey, that's that's nothing, right? Like I got free money there and I got to spend it for free. So it's um, it, it's nice. So we can look at the Bitcoin versus, oh, interesting. What is this chart? Oh, this is monitoring. Hang on a second. Ah, come on. I'm on cubes. So here we go. Um, so I don't have my GPU acceleration like like normal. Cubes does not, uh, does not give you GPU acceleration. Uh, okay, here we go. Yeah, so Bitcoin versus Monero, we've had a little bit of problems, um, mostly because Bitcoin has been kind of moving towards the upside. Uh, we'll take a look at that in a second. Bitcoin dominance is actually moving towards the upside, and I, unfortunately, I think that we're going to have to we're going to have to endure a period of time where that's going to continue and and actually you know go to the upside pretty heavily. Uh, but yeah, we're, we we kind of had a pretty big fall off. All of this fall off is is largely. Um, there was the delisting and we kind of had a comeback from the delisting, but Bitcoin also moved to the upside at the same time and moved even more strongly. So yeah, our versus Bitcoin prices, you know, it's, it's, it seems like relatively stable after, um, what was it that happened? Um, I mean, obviously that was the February, I guess we continued down until April. Okay. Anyways, um, let's see. Yeah. Nothing here. We won't really bother with anything else there. Um, taking a look here at Bitcoin. So, um, yeah, Bitcoin actually has moved into this zone. Um, a few weeks ago, we talked about, we said, hey, if we want to like, if we really want to think that Bitcoin's going to get bullish, we really want to see it get into this zone. We want to see it hold. We want to see it kind of poke above. You know, that, that's the kind of action that we want to see. Um, I would be concerned right now that there could be a fake out ready to happen. Like we might come all the way to the top side here um, and then whatever crisis is about to hit could just smash this thing to the downside one more time. Um, that 
I would kind of expect that to happen. Actually, it just seems too easy, right? You're going to get everybody bullish, every all of the maxis, and not just the maxis, all the crypto bros, everybody in the ecosystem is going to be like, hey, all right, look, we're breaking the trend. Look at the lines, the lines, bro. We broke the lines. Uh, and look, we're we're about to make a new all time high. Oh, look, we made an all time high, 76, 77. You know, they're going to they're going to get really emotional about it. And then it's just going to crash. Right. It's just going to be um, it's going to I mean, I still am totally on the crash thesis. I think November, December time frame is what we're looking at, maybe as late as January. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, for now, Bitcoin is definitely showing some strength here. The fact that it's riding in this area is is definitely a strength point for Bitcoin. The other thing that we can look at and notice is that um, is that Bitcoin has been the past week its dominance has moved up from like fifty seven percent to to almost fifty nine percent. Now I know one and a half percent doesn't sound like much, but when we're talking about dominance, um, that's actually a pretty big move. So the other thing too is that it broke out of its trend, right? Like we had we I say trend, but you know we were able to make like draw this nice little line here. Um, Actually, no, percents should not be logarithmic. Um, you know, we tried drawing this line here for a little bit of time, and now it's kind of broken that line. Maybe we have to redraw it, you know, like at any rate, this thing still seems to keep going up. And I think that we have to expect that it probably will continue going up. So holding Bitcoin right now is not a bad proposition. Uh, it has not been a bad proposition since shit really 2023 <laughs> since the very since the beginning right like with with breaks in between and solana outperformed it massively but bitcoin has outperformed most other coins here uh for a while so it was interesting it was delayed usually the bear market bitcoin immediately performs better and um, for half of the like for most of the bear market bitcoin did not perform better until the bottom hit which was kind of crazy like that was that was not that was not not exactly normal um let's go ahead and take a look at the macro and then we could probably call it good since we're trying to get in and out here. Um, yeah, the uh, the gold price took another bump today or uh, this past week, and it's actually now poking its head above this long-term line, right? We could zoom in on that a little bit. Let's go to the daily. And uh, yeah, you'll see that, yeah, we poked above kind of oscillating and then this thing just moved to the upside. So one thing, my new call here, my new target for gold um, after this target is now looking pretty solid, my new target basically rests at these ascending purple lines right here, um, these guys. So um, that's where I would expect the gold price to make its way towards. Again, crash thesis. Gold is going to crash, you know, with everything else. But, we're, you know, it's still October. We're not quite there. We haven't hit November. So, like, the window isn't quite open, you know, but uh, we do a price report every week, so you know I keep hammering on it every week that I think that we're approaching that. But yeah, I mean, my price target here now for gold um, going into next year would definitely be north of 3,000, right? So 3,000, 3,200. And, um, and this is not like a capping like, hey, you know, you're going to touch this and that's it, like time for a big cool off period. Um, the way these charts work, the way that wave magic uh, and the standard deviation analysis works is that... Um, you can actually get the price moving up to this side, maybe take a bit of a cool off and then start doing this. Meanwhile, the purple lines are going to start curling towards the upside and then price would just ride this band up to some to some big blow off level. Um, and I mean, the, re the reality is that you're going to want to hold your gold through whatever crisis is coming um, and you're going to want to wait until it has a big rebound. It's basically going to be neck and neck with the stock market for the first few months after the crisis, after the liquidity expansion begins, right? Gold's the first thing that's going to benefit from that. And then somewhere between like one and say six months after the liquidity expansion begins, the the, the latest round, which we I expect is coming, um, that's when you want to take your gold and then pivot it to other assets. Um, somewhere, again, somewhere between like one and six months, depending on your you know personal investment strategy, risk. Uh, risk tolerance and all that. Um, let's go to oil because that that was kind of another indicator that we talked about. I said, hey, you know, oil oil is falling out of trend, and as it falls out of trend, that's kind of a signal for us um, in in a global slowdown, right? Um, there's less demand for energy, less demand for oil, and it seems to have been correlated in other cases. Like so, for example, back here in 2020, uh, really 2019, we saw oil already falling out of its trend before the big crash happened in earnest. So what we're seeing here is, yeah, oil fell out of trend. It tried to come back and then it, it basically got rejected, right? It tried to get back into this big long pattern and it got rejected out of that. So, um, we're watching oil here break down again. The big, the big, um, levels in my mind to really watch for is getting into this zone. Cause once you get into this zone right here, that's where you start saying, all right, the, the pattern really is broken. It is confirmed broken. 
Um, and now it's actually breaking down from levels that it established in 2023, which were right here, right? So that, that would basically mean we're getting back into levels that were 2021 levels. Um, so yeah, that's, it's definitely, um, and then also again, uh, this was the pre 2020 crisis, whatever that thing that happened that we all somehow amnesiacally forgot. Um, but anyways, getting into this line here, that, that puts us, um, effectively back around those levels as well. So, yeah, I mean, I'm looking at oil here. If we break down, that'll be kind of an imminent, um, that'll be a little bit more of an imminent, Hey, this thing is really, really right upon us. Um, Reverse repos, they are kind of trying to save the day a little bit with reverse repos. Again, we've got a broadening structure, a megaphone pattern. So uh, this is money parked with the Federal Reserve overnight. So right now, money has been coming out of the reverse repos. Um, I don't know exactly where this money is going, but it seems like the stock markets have been doing pretty good. The S&P set a new all-time high. Let's take a look at the NASDAQ. NASDAQ is trying to get to a new all-time high. It still hasn't quite got there. Again, the reason that, that the S&P is outperforming the NASDAQ right now is because people want the safety of the S&P. They're a little bit skittish, a little bit skittish about the NASDAQ and tech stocks and risk overall. Um, let's take a look at bonds. Uh, I guess we just do this one right here. Yeah, so bonds are still kind of flat, right? Bonds have like still um, flattened out a bit. Although you can notice now for the past couple weeks, are we on the daily? Yeah. So for the past couple weeks down here, We've had a little bit of flattening out on the pink line, but the red line um, has continued to move towards the non-inverted side. So overall, in the broad picture, in the broad scheme of things, um, the bond market, when we look at all the bonds, so the red line represents all bonds from the very shortest term to the very longest term, right? So from the three month all the way to the 30 year, we look in aggregate at what all of those bonds are doing so that we can say, okay, overall, how inverted is the yield curve? And so overall, the yield curve continues to uninvert, right? The yield curve continues to get above that zero point, which again, um, this is a telltale sign that a crash is coming, right? That a big tail risk event is coming. So we're still looking at these things. Again, as I keep telling you guys, in the last crash in 2020, you know, 2019, 2020, there was a big, big move to the upside on risk assets. Um, maybe, I mean, Bitcoin was kind of recovering, but the stock market particularly just put on massive, massive gains before the crash happened. So it's one of these things where it's like, by doing that, unless you just really believe that you can call the crash and, and it's it's very difficult to do so and very few people actually can nail it down we'll see if i can get it or not right it's a pretty narrow time frame for a couple months um but unless you can really really nail down that crash by pumping the stock market immediately before a crash the cabal is telling you oh well you don't know when the crash is uh it could come out of nowhere so you've got to stay in the market look how much it pumped right and then it crashed but then it came back it's just a way of trying to keep people in their fucking scam um, and uh, I mean, what else are you going to do, right? What are you going to put your, hide your money under a mattress? Like, you know, you can't do that. So you gotta, you gotta invest it. You've got to keep up with inflation. If you don't, you're getting left behind. So, um, yeah, I mean, if we can, uh, you know, if we've got the set of tools that we need to claim that we can actually call the crash, that would be phenomenal. Um, that's maximum opportunity. Again, it's free money, right? If you can call the crash and you can have something set aside and ready to go, that is free money. You can invest in high, high risk assets. You can take loans. Um, you can go on leverage, uh, not too much leverage, be careful guys, but you can do it. Um, and, and you can just like make ass loads of money. So the problem is that more and more people are starting to realize this. Um, so, uh, hopefully not too many, right? Hopefully we can keep this secret, keep the cat in the bag and, uh, you know, just you and I can, all of us can, can benefit from it. Okay. All right. That's enough, you know, masturbation about uh, how we're going to make all this money. Cause you know, we're trying to predict the future here and trading is fraught with risk and a lot of times things don't work out how you think they will. So always make sure to stay humble, actually humble, um, and not get egotistical about your theses, you know, and be like, all right, well, that was wrong if you were wrong. Um, so yeah, I guess that's about it. Dollar index has been moving up a little bit. Okay. Not, not too important. Um, basically still trending in this general zone that we've had for 2023 since 2023. Um, I don't think we have anything else that we really need to look at here. Big picture is again, um, you know, we've got the selection coming up. They'll probably keep the markets, you know, propped up until that point. Um, and then at which point we're really entering the window for a crisis to happen. I think that you'll get the democratic emergency me measures and then Trump will take office and then Trump will do the technocratic, uh, emergency measures. And then, you know, he probably won't really do away with too much of the democratic emergency measures. So they get everything that they want, right? The left will get what they want. The right will get what they want. They'll hold hands and, uh, they'll skip, uh, merrily through the flower fields of, uh, of technocracy. So with, with that, uh, I guess I'm done and I'll hand it back to, uh, to, to you gentlemen.
Mr. Doug, and Mr. Tux. Thank you, buddy. Hey, man. Bobby, Bobby, what do you what do you Coming say? Clutch. Yeah. The the uh you're you're saying the Dems will try to pass something before Trump? Yeah, yeah. So a, a big part of the reasons for why I think that the crisis happens in such a narrow time frame, right? November to uh, let's just say January, right? Like January mm -hmm. 10th. Um is because there's a lot of emergency measures that they would want to do that would Trump would be unpopular for, right? And so again, I mean, I'm thinking in terms of Coke and Pepsi, right? Who held hands skipping through the fields as they passed the Patriot Act and as they passed all of this repressive yes. legislation? It's they, they do it right. They're together. They're hand in hand doing this together. So they want to push a bunch of emergency measures through because, you know, that's what these crises are good for. Crises are good for. So what's the best situation for a crisis to unfold and say, let's just say early December, right? Like a Christmas crisis. Well, then Kamala can ram through a bunch of emergency measures that would be popular with Democrats. And she's, you know, saving the day. I mean, I say Kamala, Biden, whatever. Um, mm -hmm. And. You know, and then Trump can be like, oh, my God, y'all completely mishandled this. It's terrible. It's just horrible. Right. And then he's going to come in and be like, oh, we're going to do the right emergency measures. And uh, and then so you'll get the you'll get whatever's popular for the Republicans and the Democrats will hate him for it. And then you had the vice versa before Trump took office, meaning that they get both the Democrat and the Republican, quote unquote, Democrat and Republican emergency measures that you get the best of both worlds. If you are the cabal, right, if, if you're trying to implement greater tyranny and greater lockdowns and control whatever right like that seems to make the most sense to me i feel like i worded that maybe a little bit wordy no i i I, 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 t I tend to agree with you i mean i definitely see uh something happening under trump right some some kind of like new new digital age patriot act right um which will just and, and and all the people that voted voted him in will, will will go along with it because there'll be some false flag that will come along with it that you know everybody will rally around with their with their flags as they as they pass whatever the next Patriot Act is. Well, he's definitely got um, some good freedom stuff in his back pocket to look good, right? He's going to free Ross. Everyone's like, he's not like. There's some people he's not going to free. Yes, he's going to free Ross. No, he's going to do it. Um, he's going to commute the sentence, right? Um, and then there was a couple other things they escaped me at the moment, but there was a couple other things that are kind of like nice little freedom token gestures. Uh, obviously, you know, he's, he's now the crypto president, so he'll do crypto friendly stuff. Um, oh, you know, I, I should, I should tell you guys about my tether milkshake. I've kind of like alluded to it and talked about, talked around it, but I think calling it the tether milkshake theory is a good way of calling it. Um, so y'all have heard of the dollar milkshake theory probably. And it's this concept that, um, it's usually like a libertarian crash fantasy where the gold standard gets re-implemented. But the idea is that, um, you know, everything's crashing and the deflation and, and the system is crumbling under the own its own mathematical impossibility of long term existence. Um, but the dollar is still the king through the crash. The dollar is, you know, the clothes, the emperor with the most clothes on. Um, and then so the dollar rises to preeminence uh, and. Um, and then goes back on the gold standard, something like that. So uh, what I call it is the tether milkshake theory. The, the problem is that for a period of time, um, the U.S. government was having a hard time selling bonds um, because no one wanted them. The world was kind of rejecting bonds in a way, uh, at least for global trade. The, as far as central bank reserves go, the entire world still uses U.S. dollars. That hasn't changed. But for global trade settlement, international um, trade settlement, the dollar was used and still is used quite a lot, but that's waning. And so a lot of treasuries bonds are not being used, government treasuries. And so the government was able to find a buyer in the form of Tether because you've got in, the entire of Latin America is using Tether, Argentina, Tether's used in Russia, Tether's used across the world um, in places where people are trying to effectively trade in dollars, but it's harder to get their hands on dollars um, because the dollar still is used as a global standard. So Tether was a way of implementing a digital dollar for people that were unbanked and wanted to be able to use the dollar in some kind of form. And so that's why we just haven't seen Paolo in the gang and Ifinex and Tether. Yeah, they got slapped on the wrist, you know, a few dozens of millions of dollars, but they didn't actually go to court. And we've seen the government throwing people in jail, taking them to court with reckless abandon, but they haven't done it to Tether. Why? Because Tether is the way for the dollar to absorb a lot of that bond buying. Tether and USDC collectively, I, I know that they don't have proper audits, but 
thinking about this, they probably actually do hold a shitload of treasuries, U.S. bonds. Um, and that was a way of, of creating the demand necessary for bonds and getting the U.S. dollar to maintain some sort of level of dominance across the world. So it was genius. It really was a genius strategy. And um, even guys like myself for a period of time were like, ah, Tether's a fraud. You know, I was, I was concerned about how fraudulent Tether was um, for a period of time that I kind of missed what was happening. Uh, that it was actually, you know, eventually I put it together. Okay, they're not being punished because they're part of the cabal, right? Why? Well, the reason is this tether milkshake theory. So sorry to drag on a little bit with an extra thing there. It was something I wanted to, to present to you guys. I, I tweeted about it earlier this past week. But um, yeah, so man, whew, mm -hmm. all right.